What's up everyone? Sam here from ByteByBite.com and in this video I'm actually going to show you a mock interview that I did via interviewing.io. So in this video you're going to see me actually approach a problem that I'd never seen before. You're going to see me work through it with my interview and ultimately come up with a solution. And I think this is going to be a really good way for you to see the behind the scenes of how I actually think about the problem and how you can start applying more structured thinking to your process. And if you want to learn a lot more strategies and everything that I know about preparing for your interviews, go to bitebybyte.com slash masterclass and you can check out my free coding interview masterclass. Hello, good afternoon. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, finally I can. Uh, it, uh, it was my fault. I'm having some trouble connecting. Uh, well, technology, <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess uh, probably there's a surge in demand for voice over IP these days. Yeah, we've been having a ton of slowdowns on all of our Zoom calls, so definitely can relate to that one. Uh huh. <laughs> Same. Okay. Well, um, as long as it's working, let's get started. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, cool. Actually, before we jump in, have you used this platform previously, or is this your first? Time? Uh, I've used it once, so I have a little bit of a better idea this time of what I'm doing than last time, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. And is there anything specific you would like to focus on uh, during today's session or happy to do general interview practice? No, just general would be perfect. All right, fantastic. So let's jump straight in. I'm going to describe a question. Uh, feel free to take notes. Also, feel okay. free to interrupt me at any point if anything is unclear. Um, so let's get started. My question is about simulating rolling a dice. And to make it more interesting, my dice can have any number of sides, so it's not necessarily six-sided. Uh -huh. And also, uh, it can be weighted. And what I mean by that is each side can have a different probability of showing up. Okay. Cool. Uh, so the user gives us a description of such a dice, and by the way, it's up to you how you want to represent that. Okay. And we want to roll it one time. Okay. So in other words, we want to simulate one roll. And that's the question. Does it make sense? So basically, we're just going to write some sort of function or class or something that's going to um, simulate a roll of a die with some random set of probabilities. Uh, with some probabilities, yes. But, but these probabilities are not random. They come from the user. Right, well, sorry, some, some predefined probabilities. Yes. Okay, and so a couple questions for you. Um, sure. Is this something where, well, I guess first of all, are we guaranteed that the, all the probabilities are going to add up to 100 or to 1? Uh, yeah, let's do that. We'll assume that that's okay. Uh, I mean, sorry, I mean, I, uh, let's assume that that's true. I, uh, writing the check is boring, so let's just get that. Right, that, that's what I was going to say. Is It's like, we can write a check for it if you want, but... It's not super exciting. Um, and then in terms of how we're going to use this, I'm, I'm wondering whether I should write just a function for this or whether it would make sense to define some sort of die class. Like, is this something where we're, we're going to be rolling it multiple times or is it just like something where it's a one-off thing? Um, okay, we, uh, we might want to roll it multiple times later. So if you want to start with a class, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, because then I'm just imagining uh, we'll that we... will probably iterate a couple of times, so okay. I, you know, I'm not going to judge you for any initial design decisions, but if you're on right. a class, I don't mind. Yeah, because I'm just imagining something really simple where we have like a die class, and then that's going to have a uh, constructor that will take mm -hmm. in the uh, probabilities of each side, and then a um, function that, like a role function that will actually generate some value. Okay, um, good. Okay, cool. And then in terms of the die, like the, the, it seems to me like the easiest way to take this as input would literally be just to say, uh, let's have a, an array of probabilities, but are we going, can I assume that we can do that with the idea that, you know, the, index is correlated to the number on that side of the die or should i also accept like custom 
like maybe the die has three sides that are like one, seven, and ten? I understand. Um, that, uh, so that's a good question, but uh, writing this mapping again is pretty boring, so we can assume right. the, the labels as your index. Okay. Your index and consecutive. All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is create a um, constructor here, which is going to, I'm just going to take in a array of doubles, which is going to be the probabilities. And I'll have some uh, private um, variable that I'm just going to call this props because it's going to take way too much time to type it out again and again. So we will just say, um, you know, this dot props equals probabilities. So we'll get that out of the way. And then, um, in terms of computing this, so I guess the question then becomes, we have some list of probabilities and we need to figure out what the, um, how we are going to like select these at random. I think that, so since the probabilities all sum up to one, uh, I feel like the easiest thing to do is gonna be to say, let's actually maybe rather than storing this as a pure list of probabilities, let's actually store this as a range. So it'll basically, we'll do a, like a running sum and compute the array because that way we can, when we compute a random value between zero and, you know, zero and one, then all we have to do is match that to the range. And so, then of course the question with that is how do we find the value um we could obviously do like a binary search there uh since they're going to be in sorted order so if we did something like that then we generate the number and then we generate the random value and then the like just just to sketch this out what this would look like sort of let's say that we had just okay. simple probabilities of so 0.25 0 0.25, 0 0.5. So we have three die, we would calculate 0 0.25, then um, this would be 0 0.5, and then we would have one. And so basically we would be looking at like which, I guess in this case, or maybe we wanna do it as a running sum starting with zero, so we'd have zero, uh, we'd have this. And then we're basically gonna find, you know, which range is our random value that we generate in, since we're generating a random between uh, zero and like 0.99999. Um, okay. But, so uh, I'm just- Yeah, sounds, oh, go ahead, sorry. I'm just wondering if there's a way that I could do this that would not take where if there's an easier way that we could find the value without having to do a binary search. Um, I don't think so. So basically you want to do a uh, between query. And as far as I know, binary search is, is the best thing you can do. Uh, you can't yeah. hash it because, um, well, then we because only have like the absolute because it's exactly, values. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, in theory though, I guess the one other thing that we could do is if we have a, I mean, if we wanted to get, we, we could at least, op, we could optimize it in certain cases if we know like the, you know, what, if we know more information about the specific probabilities, but in reality, um, we don't. <laughs> so I'm just uh, gonna- s I'm curious what you mean by that. What, uh, when could we optimize? Well, so, okay, so if we know that all of the probabilities are rounded to the nearest, you know, 10, or a hundredth place or something like that, we could just uh, generate a, um, we could we could hash all of them, for example, and just do a set, uh, like a yeah, big okay. set, where obviously, like there's some point at which that would no longer be efficient, obviously. Um, okay, I, I understand what you mean. Uh, cool. So that's another approach, but, uh, let, let's actually go with the first approach where. Okay. We, so let's just do a binary uh, search. Look up. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's, uh, uh and, uh, sorry, one more thing. Yeah. If, do you know if Java has a built-in binary search, um, library they, tool uh, thing? There definitely is. Uh, do you mind if I look this up? Uh, yes. I was going to say 
feel free to use it. I don't know what it is either, but I feel like it would. There definitely uh, is. So feel free to look it up and use it. Um, or Java. I think it might be. Oh, my computer. It's like a raised the bisect or something like that. Or not. Uh, I don't trust me. Look it up. <laughs> um, because there definitely is a. Let's see here. All right, so because I, I mostly am, I think I know basically what I want to do, but I mostly am wondering what the behavior is when it when the actual value is not in the array, because that's obviously probably going to be most of what we are dealing with here. Mm, yes. So. Um, if contained in the array, uh, otherwise, oh, otherwise insertion point minus one. So that actually, I think, is what I want. Um, it's just going to be array okay, that binary search. So um, we're going to return a integer, right? Because we're we're assuming that the uh, index in this like in in this like probabilities array is the value on that side of the die. Since we're not doing any mapping, so um, uh, yep. Roll, and that's not going to take in anything. And then we are just gonna let's see. I guess that random. Um, so it's. Um, Yeah, so it's a raise.binary search, and then it takes in the array itself, which is probs, and it's going to take in the value that we're searching for, which is random. And then since it's returning the insertion point minus one, um, since we're looking for basically, if, if, we if we have a miss, we want basically the previous index. So I think that actually is what we want. And so we're just going to return the index. Uh, can you double check for me, erase yeah. binary search, what does it return if there isn't a match? So it's what it's, it says that, oh, actually it returns negative insertion point minus one. It's this. And so, yeah, okay. so wait, so let me actually make sure that we're thinking about this right. So if if the insertion point would be um, if the insertion point would be index one, then that means that we want to return zero, right? Because if 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 uh, in our example here, if we had zero point one, that would the insertion point would be after the first one, so it would be the insertion point would be one, but we want to in but the value we want to return is zero. And so we'd have negative one minus one is negative two. Am I thinking about this right? right? So I'm going to actually want to then, in this case, I guess I actually need to test this then because I need to say, you know, uh, if x is greater than or equal to zero, return the index because that means we had a hit and then otherwise um, return I need to add one and then invert it I need to but I want to get the I want to get the insertion point itself and so the and I also know that the insertion point is never going to be zero because Yes. It's either going to be a hit or it's going to be greater than zero. So I can say, um, so I'm going to say basically it's insertion point. And the reason we need this negative one, this minus one is because in case it's exactly zero, because otherwise we're going to end up with a positive value or we're going to end up with zero and we're not going to be able to differentiate. So if mm -hmm. I, 
I can just say insertion IDX. Uh, it's going to be. IDX. I mean, it's, it's, if I want to recover the actual insertion point, it's negative ID or no, it's, it's, negative IDX plus one. So if the insertion point is one, we would have negative two. So that would be two. Why is this, this is just like unnecessarily confusing. <laughs> um, uh, no worries. Uh, feel free to run, I mean, actually, I guess you're doing this. Uh, run through an example. Uh, convince yourself. Yeah. So if so, in this in this example here, we would have again the insertion point is one, and so we would get negative one minus one is going to be equal to negative two, and what we want to recover is actually zero, and so it should be negative idx. Um, and so in, to get from so uh, negative two. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we would want, we want to do plus one and then we want to neg we want to then, because we want to do this in reverse. So we want to do plus one and then we want to negate the whole thing. But then we need to, we will actually want the we actually want to return the value before the insertion point, which is, so we got to subtract one. So it's like we end up with negative one in here. So we get one minus one is zero. And then if we expand this out, we end up with, um, yeah, this minus two. Good. Um, I that was think way that's too much right. <laughs> No worries. Uh, good, perfect. Cool. And I don't know the order of operations here. Do you have to put brackets around uh, index minus two? Uh, I don't think so. But um, I mean, we're doing the net. We're, we want to do negative index first, and then. Oh, actually, sorry, sorry. I'm reading it backwards. You're totally right. This is okay. this is correct. So I think that should work. Uh, should we test this? Uh, yeah, let's. All right, so let's, because we can actually, um, uh, so let's just do this simple example that we had before, which is going to be 0. Oh, right. We never actually computed this either, though. So we need to do that real quick because we're going to do 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So point, I'll do this. And so before we actually do this, we need to, this changes because we have a, um, uh, this is doubles. This is doubles too. I'm gonna to make this mistake a thousand times. I guarantee it. <laughs> um, is gonna be no. probabilities dot length, and then for D and. So I'm gonna need to keep it, keep trying the index. So uh, probabilities ah, I. Right, so we're just gonna sum that up, and we're actually not gonna capture the very last one. But that's fine. 
So I guess we could, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then this is what actually becomes the, so maybe we want to rename this at some point, but for now I'm just going to leave it. So that's what we need. And then we can do, you know, let's try a couple. Let's see what happens. All right, so we're getting the same one each time, which I guess is possible, but seems unlikely. And, and yeah, let me actually see I what- I guess we can hit run again. Yeah, we can try this one more time, but uh, yeah. So something's, something's up here. Let's see if we're actually, um, let's see. Let's actually do a couple. I want to do a couple things here. First, I want to. I want to see what the what this pre comp actually looks like. Mm, okay. And then I also want to see what the random number is that we're generating for starters, and then we'll go from there. All right, so this is not right, um, which would explain why we're getting weirdness. Let's, let me, oh, well, that was dumb. So let's try that again. All right, so now this is looking a lot more reasonable. Both this initially is looking correct to me i think we could test like we could test it a couple more times and i mean if we want to we could write a something to actually run you know do some more automated tests but uh at the moment this appears to this search appears to behave to be behaving the way that i expect it to um yeah i tend to agree you mentioned automated testing uh maybe we don't need to actually do it but how would we do that like how, how would we think about this yeah i mean a couple things like the the immediate things that i would just like kind of looking at this that i would want to do is honest i mean for starters i'm just like still feeling not a uh, not a hundred percent about this binary search and so i'd want to test like all of the sort of boundary conditions there so i'd want to test it uh for all for a bunch of like fixed probabilities um obviously the way that we're doing this that we have this written right now it would be a little bit hard to do that so we'd probably have to extract out the uh random value but we could maybe like we could extract this into a second um overloaded function where we could um you know, have a private function that would, we would have our public role that would generate the random number and then call the private function that would allow us to test that. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also probably just, I mean, my, my, it depends, I guess it depends. Like if I were just testing this for my own sake, I would just probably write something that would run it a bunch of times randomly and actually like uh, validate that it was doing what I expected it to do. I would probably implement it just another way and Okay. Compare. Um, I see what you mean. So actually, I really like the uh, run it a bunch of times and check that the number of times we see one, two, and three, or zero, one, and two uh, yeah. is reasonable. Uh, and actually, the reason I like that, well, one reason I like that is because unlike a unit test where you inject probability, uh, where, where you inject the rand, um, the, the this end to end test is oh my gosh I'm blanking is is uh, implementation agnostic yeah uh, and actually in a minute I'm gonna ask you to change the implementation so let's okay. let's go let's ahead do and do that let's go ahead sure. and roll it a thousand times you want me to roll it a thousand times uh yes all right so um I mean 
Do you, so for that, you want me to write a function that's going to roll it a thousand times, or you want me to like what? What do you? What do you want the output to look like? So I guess what I would look for is if I if if I roll this dice a bunch of times, let's say I roll it mm -hmm. a thousand times, I expect to see about two hundred and fifty zeros, two hundred and fifty ones, and uh, five hundred twos, right? Yeah. Uh, so let's actually let's just print out the number of zeros, ones, and twos, and uh, we can visually inspect to see if that's near two fifty, two fifty, five hundred. So okay, so you do you want me to do this like because I'm also thinking if we we might want to think about like how we are generating our random numbers here. So do you want me to like re-implement stuff or do you want me to just write a phone? Like, is the goal here to just test it and see if it's working? Or is the goal here to say, yes. let's do this? Okay. Because that, because then uh, I could... Yes. And for whatever it's worth, I think line 38, 39 is correct. Okay. Um, uh, and and if, if it's not, we'll probably catch it now. Yeah. So, so, but do you, I guess, I guess really what I mean is, do you want me to implement this as a function in our die class? Or should I just write it in the main method so that we can test it? Oh, no, uh, I absolutely think it should be in the main method. Okay. All right, so And then... actually, in general, I guess people keep uh, implementation and tests separate. Yeah. Right. Like, no, I, I, I just, I, I was mostly wondering whether, like, this was, whether you wanted this to be a feature of our die or whether the goal was to just test it. Um, but since it sounds like the goal oh, is I understand. to test it. Uh, the goal is to test it. So let's um, so I think that is right and then all right so that's that's close enough for a, since we're only running it a thousand times that's close enough for me to feel pretty good about it. Uh, yeah, I, I tend to agree. Like, I mean, we're okay, definitely going to see some randomness here, but... Yes. Uh, and if we wanted to do more statistics, I guess we could work out, like, what the tolerance should be and blah, 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 but I don't feel like... Oh, it's been a long time since I've done um... that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and, I mean, yeah, that's more of a statistics knowledge than it is computer science so let's yeah i mean it's an interesting right. question um for sure but it is but it's not something i expect you to have memorized and it's a little <laughs> more tedious to look up so i don't think it's a good yeah. 45 minute interview question um <laughs> so instead i want to ask you something else uh okay. in this implementation we're using uh where is it we're using math.random mm -hmm. What would happen if uh, Java didn't offer a math.random uh, library call? Oh, interesting. So um, basically what you're asking is if we needed to implement this ourselves in some way or... Uh, I mean, we could... I'm just trying to think like... In terms of actually generating random numbers, we could write some sort of like pseudo random number generator. Um, you know, we could, there's a lot of stuff that we could implement. I don't remember the math off the top of my head for that, but we could also try and find something else that we could um, use to generate stuff pseudo randomly like we could use the light we could use like a timestamp or something and actually you know an easy way that we could do this would be to say i don't know i don't know how effective it would be but we could take a timestamp and then we could easily do a binary like you know 
it's we could we could like generate uh buy like a boolean ran fairly randomly by saying is that is the timestamp even or odd so that, like is uh -huh. that sort of okay. what you're talking about uh, so, I mean, this is mostly just a discussion, but so it sounds like what uh -huh. you're getting at is we can uh, try to build our own pseudo-random number generator, um, and as part of that, we'll probably need some kind of seed, and we could get the seed from the timestamp. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I guess, in fact, this is what people do, right? People seed their random number generators with, like, I think mostly timestamps. Some people use, like, a keyboard like keystrokes or mouse movements or network packets, but um, whatever, that's very engineering. <laughs> um, cool, and then I guess the other thing we can do is by building, by, by looking at just some numbers like the timestamp. Uh, I think, I don't know, in that direction, but like in that case, it would still be hard to get a lot of energy waiting around a bunch. Sorry, I'm losing you a little bit. And if you try to run it at a whoops. Um, okay. Sounds like it's Can better now. Can you hear now. me any better now? Yeah. Can you just really All repeat right, the last thing you said? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, so I, I like your idea about using the timestamp, but I don't think it will completely work because... If you run this in a loop, probably it will go through many iterations on, on, on the same millisecond or nanosecond or whatever. Um, yeah. And even if it doesn't, the progression of milliseconds is kind of deterministic. Uh, so it's going to be hard to convince ourselves that the dice rolls are independent. Right. Yeah, I'm um, thinking like... Yeah, I guess I that, that is guess. one big problem if you're do if you're spending uh, if if you're looping through it multiple times per you know unit, whether it's nanoseconds or milliseconds. That's that to me seems like the biggest issue because the rest of it obviously it's not a hundred percent you know it is deterministic, but you have there's. I guess that there would be enough randomness at least injected that we could, I don't know. I mean, maybe not, but it seems like at least if, if it's also one thing if we're just generating like a Boolean, like true or false versus whether we're trying to say like, okay, let's choose a random number out of 10 different numbers. Mm, I understand what you mean. Uh, I think my point is it's going to be difficult to reason about it. Uh, and and yes. even with the Boolean example, it depends how you generate it. If you generate it by doing timestamp modulo 2, uh, then very likely you'll have a sequence like true, false, true, false. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, but anyway, you're... Mm, definitely I'm convinced you can, you can think about this. Uh, I guess another, like, hack you could do is if you're on a Linux system, you can cat slash dev slash random or whatever it is. Right. Although that feels kind of like cheating because um, it's kind of like saying that, okay, well, Java doesn't have it implemented, but we're going to use an implementation somewhere else. <laughs> well, yeah, but we're not purists. We're engineers. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I, I take your point. Um, okay, cool. That was fun. Uh, what I'm actually going to ask Next is, uh -huh. uh, so, okay, we need some source of randomness, and we talked a little bit about how we might get that. Um, let's say that our system has a source of randomness, but it's very crippled. In particular, I'm going go to I'm gonna go with what you said. Uh, okay. We have a function that gives us one random bit. Okay. Uh, so you can imagine an implementation might be like uh, math.random less than 0 0.5 and return that. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so now I want to talk about if we had that random bit function, uh, how would we, like how would this implementation change? How would we roll our dice? Right. So obviously, you know, we're going to need to roll multiple times depending on the... Um, 
number of items that we have. And so I think that the the hard thing here is that if I recall correctly, it's not as simple as just saying, you know, you, you end up with this like these additive things when it comes to or multiplicative pieces that, with the probabilities where it like doesn't actually um, where it's no longer like you're, you're screwing up the probabilities. Um, and so in this particular case as well, we have these sort of predefined probabilities. And so it's like, I mean, obviously we're going to have to call it multiple times, but the question becomes, I think, how many, um, how, how we combine those into a series of what we need. So... Um, yes, you're absolutely right. That's the question. Right. So, like, the immediate thing that comes to mind for me, and I'm not exactly sure right now as I'm talking through it, like, how we would do this, but the immediate thing that comes to mind for me is, like, a reservoir sampling sort of thing where we do, like, a you know, keep this item with some probability and if not, move on to the next item. But that doesn't actually help us when we have essentially 50-50 probabilities for everything. I do, the other thing that strikes me as a possibility is to do something where we would basically, like it strikes me that we're not going to be able to very easily do this 100% correctly i think that it seems like something that we are going to have to define essentially how many what is going to be the um the like uh fidelity of what we're doing how many slices are we going to generate because we can't generate a really precise random number without doing a ton of work that may be completely unnecessary so um, I'm... maybe you're right. I'm, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you're right, but you might be. I will say one thing. In our first uh -huh. implementation, we used this uh, double on line mm -hmm. 40. And if you're a mathematician, you might argue that, well, you know, actually double is approximate as well. It yeah. only has however many binary digits. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're engineers enough to say that uh, double is close enough to continuous. Uh, but you know, two digits is not quite, not quite enough. Uh, so uh, oh, I'm sorry. What I'm getting at is, if you come up with a solution that's about as good as double precision, or even like half as good, that's mm -hmm. good enough. Right. So I mean, what I immediately had in mind is probably is not that good. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's something like. We would have to slice it. We would have to define a number of slices, and I wouldn't want to define that many slices. I wonder if we could do, like, one thing. What, what, one do, you, thing, what do you mean by this? So, or, sorry, go ahead. Here, yeah, so if I just, like, sketch this out here, I'm imagining, like, let's... The, the thing that immediately came to mind for me was to say, let's say that we have, an, you know, an array of, like, a thousand booleans or something that represent essentially slices. So like this is 0, 0.00 through 0 0.01. And then we have 0 0.01 through 0 0.02. And it's like, if we generate, if we basically select one of those, we use our, our we use our uh, binary random number to select one of those essentially ranges that becomes our like random number um i see what you mean uh but it's not obvious to me how would i select so with a hundred coin tosses how do i select one yeah. range between between these well that's i mean that's the other thing is i'm not i'm i'm trying to think through that as well um so I actually we... think this approach is very interesting, so I'm going to push you in this direction. Okay. Um, in particular, let me ask something else. I don't know if this will help, but let me try. 
if I toss one coin, like how many ranges does that between? So it gives you two ranges. Because you're base you could basically have zero to point five or okay, cool. and then if you toss two coins, you could theoretically generate four ranges. And I'm just trying and then you could keep I mean you could keep dividing that way. Uh-huh. Um I'm trying to think I guess those are see like my my original thought was that you if you did that it wouldn't be random. But I think if you do a fixed number, so what isn't random is if you were to say like count the number of heads versus the number of tails. Right? Because that there is a I guess that would be yeah, that would follow by, you're right, that would follow on binomial, it's... Right, uh, it's yeah, random, okay. It's not uniform. Right, yes, okay. And so, but I guess this would, because all orderings are going to give, all orderings are going to give you a different final result. And so, all orderings are equally likely. Because it's not just the count, it's the total order. So I guess, yeah, in that case we could get fairly precise because we're basically going to say, you know, or we, we can get however precise we want. And so, for example, you know, you were talking about the doubles here. We could get to a precision of, you know, 32 bits mm -hmm. or whatever it is pretty easily because we only have to do 32 coin tosses. And then we're essentially going to end up with a lot of very, we are, we are basically generating lots of really small ranges. Um, but we're right. not I, I, I agree. by and predefining those ranges. Yes. And, and actually, I think there's a nice analogy here where, in this case, every time you toss your coin, every time you split your range in two, it's the equivalent of adding one more digit to, your, um, yeah. to, to this value you're calling rand. Except right. one more binary digit as opposed to one more decimal digit. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I mean, actually, it's interesting. It's interesting potentially to think about it that way, because rather than even. Um, because when it, that's even that would be even simpler than what I was thinking, which is that you could literally use the coin flips as the bits in your binary number to. That is like the result that is that random number, right? Like rather than I was thinking more like, let's keep track of, you know, what the range is and we'll modify, we'll start with, you know, either zero or point, zero or one. And then we're going to edit, we're going to modify it from there, depending on whether it's heads or tails, but we don't even need to do that. We can just generate bits. Um, yes. You're absolutely right. With n coin tosses, you can have a n digit uh, binary number. Um, so actually, that could work. But I wanna, I wanna do. I, actually, I wanna go back to the ranges idea for just one okay. more minute. Um, because actually, sorry, let me back up. So we just discussed a way to uh, solve this using. Uh, getting to approximately double precision uh, using 32 coin tosses or however many. Mm -hmm. um, my follow-up question is this coin toss function is it's there, but it's quite expensive. So I don't want to run it more than I right. need to. Um, and, and for example, if actually in, in our example, uh, where the probabilities are 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, mm -hmm. um, I feel like we need probably less than uh, 30 coin tosses. Yeah. Uh, so with the range idea, can we, when can we do an early stopping? Well, so we could, I mean, I think that the, like one way to think about it would be to scan our array and basically calculate the maximum precision of any of the probabilities in the array and just do it that way um 
I guess the other thing that we could, I mean, the other thing that we could look at is if we, if we're, if we have a range, we can say, is that entire range contained within one, within one of our probabilities, right? Because if we, if we get to the range of zero to uh -huh. point 0.1 or something, then obviously we don't have to keep going because there's no way that it's going to end up being, uh, it's going to end up being side one or side two of the die. So we could stop that way just by checking whether that range is fully contained within the range of the that side of the die. Doesn't always awesome. Um, depending on the probabilities, right? it might. Depending on the probabilities, we aren't. We don't have any guarantees though, because we might end up like if the probabilities were done right, we end up straddling the line until the very very end. Um, that's true, but you have to be exponentially unlucky for that to happen. Yes, yes, but we I'm just saying we could screw it up if we wanted to. <laughs> like we, we could design uh, I, an input that would screw it up that way. That's true, but I think that's equivalent to saying we can design an input that doesn't that that isn't a power of two. Uh, and then what essentially happens is you end up with some float rounding. Ah uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this would be good. This this that. does make sense in most cases. I I agree with you. I'm just saying there there are weird edge cases that we could come up with. Uh, so uh, I, okay, I agree with you. There are, uh, but my claim is, I think even for the weirdest edge case you can come up with, uh, it's just gonna be that if I'm extremely unlucky, it will take uh. Well, I guess it could take worst case forever to, to converge. But for that, I have to be extremely unlucky. Yeah. Like, I need every coin toss to be not in my favor. Right, right. That's true. Which is very unlikely, I agree. <laughs> uh, yes, and I guess if you're, like, super paranoid, you can do some stopping where if I toss the coin 100 times and I'm still unlucky... Uh, that means whoever seeded the random number generator is adversarial, so I can just stop. <laughs> That's true too. Um, okay, cool. Let's. Uh, I don't know if we have time, but I feel like we might. Uh, okay. Let's let's try to build that. Uh, okay. To build that general idea, and for this, actually, I only care about minimizing the number of calls to random bit. Uh, so don't worry if your solution is uh, quadratic or even cubic. All right. So um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Uh, what the right way to do this is, because basically, I mean, I think that the the easiest is obviously to just sort of uh insert bits and i, I guess and then but then i i'm just trying to think like in terms of how a double like a, if i wanted to actually generate the double or maybe i just want to say let me generate a random integer and then i'll do like one divided by that integer is my double i feel like that's like easier Um, you can try that. I mean, like, uh, what I'm... So you could generate an integer with, like, bit shifts or whatever, and then uh, divide by 2 to the power of that to get the double. Hmm, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Right, so, um, if we... Let's close roll two. So basically what we're gonna do is we're generating the we're generating the random number and we're going to see if that random number is within the range and then the essentially what we need to do what we need to know is we need to keep track of what the range is and is that range fully contained within the range for our um our like pre-computed array 
And so what I'm thinking is yeah. we can um, let's limit this to um, since they're doubles, I'm gonna limit it to thirty two bits. Because I mean like like if I actually can I make a suggestion? I, yes. I, I see what you're saying. Uh, and you can probably limit it, but uh, maybe you don't even need to. I, I just thought of a slightly, maybe more natural way to do this. Okay. Uh, so you said that we're keeping track of a range, which initially is from zero to one and then keeps shrinking. Yeah. Um, and we want to check if this range is contained that we're inside of any of Actually... the props. It might be easier to keep track of this range as like just an upper and a lower. Instead yeah, I was just, uh, you, you started saying that, I was just thinking that, because it would actually be pretty easy for us to update those, to update the upper and lower. So, like, if we had a, you know, let's say, and... 1.0 then we could say essentially uh, I mean honestly we could just might be easier for us to just do this as a while loop so like while I'm gonna do this for the moment um, and then I'll say that we have our um, so we get our random bit and then I'm basically going to say uh, you know if rand then I'm like if it's if it's uh, if it's true, I'm going to take the top half of the range. And if it's false, I'm going to take the bottom half of the range. So to get the, to do that, I'm going to say range. So I'm updating, since I'm taking the top half, I'm updating the bottom half, which is going to be just range zero plus range one divided by two. And then otherwise, cool. I do the reverse. And then I just need to add some sort of checking of whether we've basic, like whether we're uh, completely contained within the range yet. And so I would probably just do this I'm probably just going to do essentially this binary search thing again, and I'm going to binary search this, and then I'll say, um, and then I can easily look at the next item. So like I'll say, you know, idx equals negative idx minus two, and if idx, if, what is it, precomp, IDX plus one is less than uh, whatever it is, range one, then I'm going to return. It's like something like that. Uh, uh, this script, um, except, yeah. Uh, what are we binary searching for? Uh, I mean, it's just, I guess we don't really, I was just thinking that it's an easy way to check again, like whether we are what? completely contained within the range or not. Um, we could probably do it without that because we are being like, if we wanted to, I guess we could track where we are in the array at a given time and we could 
do that and we could sort of narrow in that way. Um, we could keep like, you know, we could have a... Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, yes, you can, but it, it's not tedious. We don't need to. Do it. The point was round as undefined. I think you want uh, one of the ranges. Sorry, I missed that. What did you say? On line 59, uh -huh. RAND is undefined, I think. Uh, or, or it is, but it's a random boolean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it should be um, range 0. Because we're searching for range 0, and then we want to see basically... Uh, we, wa we want to find where that is where um, the lower end of the range is. And then we want to basically see is the, is the next item less than, is the next item less than the remaining, uh, shoot, I think this is, I think I have this backwards. I think it's actually, um, I think this this part should be the other way around because it should be if the if the range is less than the next item, then that means that we have found a tight enough range. Um. Yes. Okay. I'm not a compiler, but this feels right to me. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. I need to implement this. Otherwise, we can test it, but. Uh, I mean, it's, mm. okay, I guess, I guess we're at time, so, uh, I, I'm happy to go over, but I don't know how you're doing. I'm fine, I don't want to take too much of your time, though. Oh, I don't mind. Um, so if, uh, let me put it this way, as far as the interview goes, I'm, uh, if, like me, you have, like, completeness issues where you're unhappy if something is not quite finished, <laughs> uh, then I'm totally happy to uh, implement random bit and convince ourselves that this actually works. Uh, if not, I'm also happy to stop here. Completely up to you. Why don't we just wrap up here? Because I don't want to take too much of your time. And I feel, I feel good okay, enough cool. about this. I might, I might test it on my own afterwards, but I don't need to take your time to do that. <laughs> Uh, cool. That that makes sense. And like, I think the logic is definitely right. I don't know if we're off by one somewhere, but like, I think we might be. I think we might be with it. this index, but um, again, I could test it. Um, yeah, I I I, I don't know if we are. Uh, but anyway, that's not the uh, like in, in practice. We would just run it, so I'm not going to evaluate yeah. whether you can pretend to be a compiler. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So uh, I guess let's wrap up here really quickly. How do you think this went? Or yeah, what do you think? I, I feel pretty good about this as a whole. I think that um, it's definitely, uh, I like, I like problems like this where it's more of a matter of let's take something that in and of itself is not necessarily super, super tricky, but let's go deeper on it. So I think that that, like, it was definitely interesting sort of thinking about the, um, the randomness and all that stuff, because that's not something that I've thought about in a while. So generally, I'd say I think it went pretty well. I think there were some things that could have been a little more focused, but yeah. Uh, like what? Oh, as, when getting into, like, the random stuff in particular, I think that we went a little bit, or I took us a little bit on a tangent. So just that sort of thing. Um, I, I, I don't remember feeling that way, but, uh, uh so some, uh, poor time management, uh, in the middle where I guess we kind of chatted for a bit, but I also think it's good to take a break between questions. That's so fair. I, <laughs> actually don't mind that uh maybe i took it too long and we kind of ran short on time at the end but uh that's totally on me um as far as i mean i'm trying to think what kind of feedback can i give uh like i said earlier i'm uh i mean 
I'm I'm very happy with how you did, and I this would be a strong awesome. move forward. Um, as far as I don't know, I, I I'm really struggled struggling to think to to point out things that you could do better. So like in terms of problem solving, you you know obviously you had the right idea to start with. Uh, at the end where we were talking about like ranges or whatever on line 71 mm -hmm. uh, I gave you a slight nudge and you very quickly picked up on that and built on top of it so not only can you problem solve you can also communicate uh, and, and run with ideas uh, yeah implementation everything looks solid uh, I could follow along what you were saying super clearly uh, so like absolutely no issues with communication. Um, yeah, I, I know this is maybe not super satisfying, but I can't think of any meaningful constructive criticism. I mean, I appreciate that. I guess that's not really a, I agree it's not super satisfying, but it's also not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's a good thing, but- uh, like I'm not, I, I can't complain about that too much. <laughs> I do feel like this was helpful. So I appreciate it. Um, okay, great. I, I mean, yeah, I hope, uh, if nothing else, I hope you had fun thinking through it. Yeah, it was uh, definitely great. an interesting problem. Anything else you want to ask me or talk about? I don't think so. I think this was definitely super helpful. I'm glad I got to, you know, kind of exercise my brain a little bit here. And definitely an interesting problem to play around with. Okay, excellent. Uh, great. In that case, let's wrap up here and uh, enjoy your, uh, I'm in the UK. We have a long weekend, so I almost said enjoy your long I weekend. I think we might too. I'm not sure, to be totally honest. <laughs> I'm still working today, but. <laughs> yeah, I guess everything is weird now. Um... <laughs> yeah, it's confusing. Okay. But well, hope, hope everything uh, is safe not, over there. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You as well. All right, thanks for sticking around with me to the end here. If you enjoyed this and want to do your own mock interview on interviewing.io, you can actually use our link bitebybyte.com slash interviewing.io and you'll get $30 off your first mock interview. We do get a little bit of a kickback on that, but it is a really good platform if you're looking to do mock interviews. And with that, that's all I got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please do give us a like and subscribe. It really helps us grow the channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.